Hi, this is Ed Kohler with Extreme Networks, and here we are with the second in the video series uh, on basic Fabric Connect show commands. As you will recall, we set up a Fabric Connect node in the first video and used a few commands to validate the fact that we had connectivity to the fabric. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper dive to show you a little bit more detail of what we can see from the network element that we configured, which is switch four. So one of the things I want to point out is this purple box will become important throughout the series because we will change perspective from switch one to switch three and perhaps switch two over the course of the video series. So whenever I show a command line sequence, I will always show the lab topology ahead a time and the purple box will indicate where we are at and of course that will be obvious by the command line prompt uh, because we are clearly labeled switch one two three or four but this is just a technical note to give you the uh, background of the lab and which switch we're talking to in which exercise okay beyond that uh, what we're going to do is bring up our command line interface and as you can see, we're attached to switch four again. We are going to go into the enabled mode and that is always indicated by a pound or hash indicator. From here, we can do all our show commands. Many of the show commands that I'm going to uh, illustrate uh, will work at the normal user prompt. If you ever have a question of what you can do with a show command, just do a show question mark. And this will list out all of the particular commands that you have available to you um, at the particular command line level that you are at. So without any further ado, let's uh, start looking at the Fabric Connect network and what we set up in the last video. The first thing we're going to do is look at a show SPBM command. And that shows us that uh, SPBM is enabled. It also gives us an indication of the ether type, which is 8100, as you will recall, that's the uh, setting and that's also the default for all Fabric Connect. And so this is good, this is what we want to see. Let's also do the show ISIS command. And as you recall, that's the command that we ran right at the end of the run SPBM script to validate the fact that things were up and running. And we are showing enabled, uh, we can see our system ID, we can see our router name, and also the IP source address, and also the indication of the number of ISIS interfaces we have. So following through with that, we will do a show ISIS interface. And by the way, you can see that I am kind of doing a short form on these things. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to, but uh, you, you normally don't have to type out the full command line. So just to show ISAS enter, and you can see that we're showing that the op state is up. Uh, that's because we enabled it with the no shut command on the previous video, and of course we did a save config on that. Uh, so we can see that you know ISIS is up and running. Uh, we have our adjacencies uh, uh, up, uh, but we don't know who yet. So. And again, we ran this command on the last video, but the show ISIS adjacency command basically indicates who your neighbors are. And host names are very friendly at this point, indicating that our neighbors are switch one and switch three. A couple other things we can do is we can do a show ISIS system ID if we just need to specifically know that information. And correspondingly, we can also show the manual area, which as you will recall was 10.01. Now, a couple other commands that are kind of neat is to go into the SPBM portion of the command line. And in this case, we're going to do a unicast FIP, the forwarding information base. And this gives us a table. And you can see that the table has different system IDs uh, from each switch. And of course, our friendly host names uh, give us an indication of what we're looking at. Then if we take a further look at this, we can see that we have the BMAC addresses of each of the switch nodes. So we have 01 here. Uh, we have uh, 02 and three and four, so forth, so on. We can also see that we have our nickname uh, and that is highlighted in various portions with an all lefts portion towards the end. And that happens at each BBID. And then we can also see 
that we have entries for our own switch as well. And this gives us indication of the costs. Uh, so there's some things that we can incline off of this. First of all, the outgoing interfaces. Again, this is all from the perspective of switch four. That switch one is a cost of 10 to us. Switch two is a cost of 20, so it must be one hop away. And then switch three is a cost of 10 as well. So switch three and switch one are directly connected to us. Switch zero indicates that it's ourselves. And then switch two, uh, we are actually interfacing either through switch one or switch three. Now, we can actually find that detail by going to the unicast tree. And this command will require you to run the syntax of one of the BBIDs that you want to uh, do the investigation against. So in here, we're going to check against the primary first. And remember, we're looking at the perspective from switch four, which is the root. So we are the root, and we can see that we are indeed connected to switch one. From a root perspective on BVID, 4051, we are connecting to switch two through switch one. And then we can see that we are directly connected to switch three. Now, if I run the same command over 4052, we get the opposite. Switch one is directly connected to us. We are reaching switch two over BVID 4052 through switch three. So this gives you some inkling of the actual Ethernet switch path behaviors, and we'll cover quite a bit more in detail on this when we go into CFM uh, in the last video series. But right now, this gives you some inclination that we have alternate path behaviors over the network, and uh, this is a way to tease that information out. Uh, we can also look at uh, multicast fit. And the multicast fib will give us a table that will indicate to us the source behaviors for multicast. And a couple of things I want to point out on these multicast uh, destination addresses is you will see that obviously we have a high order indicator and we use 03 to indicate multicast behavior. The next thing that you will see is the nickname or the shortest path source ID within the actual BMAC environment. The last value you will find is the hexed value of the ISID. Okay, and you'll see that's consistent throughout. So this is basically how we can do the replication and how the fabric can use this information at the actual forwarding plane level to do the job that it needs to do. And this is quite correct too, because switch two has nothing on it. Uh, switch four, we just created, it has no services provisioned at all. Switch one and switch three in my lab are the really the active uh, switches within the network. And you'll see that as we move on throughout the video series. So there is quite a bit that we can gain uh, out of these simple tables uh, if, if we understand how to read them. The last thing I want to do is, if you will recall, we indicated that we were going to show and start up IP shortcuts. So let's do a show on the IP information that we have. And again, we have quite a table. You can see that we have the ISIS source addresses uh, for the switches themselves. And we have an entry for each BBID. We also have a 10.1 network. And as you recall, that was the management network. And we have since taken and placed that on ourselves as well. And then we also have this 10.10 network at the bottom. And we can see that it's resident to switch three. This is my administrative subnet. This is where I have all of my management, uh, all of my policy controls, my network administration, my network access. All of this happens here. Um, I also have any administrative interfaces to any firewalls, things of that nature, all happening here. This is the global routing table. This is the GRT. And we can actually show that by running the command, just show IP route, which is not necessarily specific to Fabric Connect. And you can see that we have a fairly short table. And the shortness of this table is intentional because of the fact that I really only want the ISIS switch interfaces 
the ISIS source IPs, uh, the management network itself, and perhaps administrative subnet domains on this protocol level. I don't want really any user substrates on this plane. This is an important administrative aspect. And one of the reasons why I want to do that is I'm just going to take and do a simple command of Telnet. Now, remember, I, I haven't locked down these switches at all, but this just shows you the aspect of the plane is that I'm going to Telnet into switch one, and now I'm actually into switch one. And I think that's critical. But the point is, is that now I'm into the switch. So not only can we move from switch to switch throughout the management plane, but if a user actually had access, you had user subnets, and they knew what these addresses were, well, now you've got to really do some hardening, and that hardening has to be intense. Now, we do have the ability to do that, and obviously, Telnet is not something you should have enabled in a general practice. However, however, I do want to emphasize that by moving all users into an elevated plane, an elevated service domain, i.e. an L2 VSN or an L3 VSN, now you've got quite a bit of power and the management plane of the network becomes orthogonal. There's no way to gain access to it. Uh, and to me, that's just good, solid security design. Now, the last thing I want to do is kind of rerun the show ISIS LSDB command. But this time, I'm going to just give you a sneak peek by running the detail extension. And we're not going to go through this in detail, but you can see that now I'm looking at the ISIS link state database in a different light, uh, a magnifying glass, if you will. And here we can show some very detailed information about the service cloud, about what's going on within the network and about the services that are provisioned and enabled across the infrastructure. So this becomes very valuable information for us and it's an important thing that we learn how to read. That's what we're going to follow up on in the next video. So that's pretty much it. That gives you the basic Fabric Connect show commands. If you have any other additional things you want to run, just do a show ISIS SPBM. And just remember, you can run the question mark and it'll tell you everything you can ask. We can actually ask specifics about ICID. So I can say, for instance, show me ICID all. And it lists my ICIDs, uh, give me my source names, my BDIDs, my information, and, and the fact of whether they're discovered or configured. Discovered meaning that they don't have residence on switch number four at this point in time. That will change over the course of the labs. You'll also know that all of my ICIDs are even. We're going to change that too, because it's important that we see how the different services behave over the fabric from a Ethernet switched path perspective. And the BDIDs, in understanding what's going on within the fabric is a very important aspect to that. Now, the topology we're using here is very simple and that's intentional because everything will be very, very clear. The same theory holds true in more complicated topologies. So that's pretty much it. Looking forward to seeing you on the next video where we go into uh, ISIS Link State Database Tour. Take care.